All right, now let's look at the adaptive immune system, which is the third line of defense. Like I said, this particular type of immunity is very specific, right? They only target a specific virus, a specific uh, bacterium, or a specific parasite. In this particular immune system, there are two arms. First one, humor immunity is also known as the antibody-mediated immunity. And that's because this type of immunity involves protection from antibody, right? You, can, you have to remember this antibody. The second arm, cell-mediated immunity, has nothing to do with antibody. Instead, they involve specific immune cells to provide protection. And the cell-mediated immunity is very similar to NK cells. They target cells that have been infected. Could be a virus, could be a parasite. And that's because the viruses or the parasites live inside the cells, right? So the antibody or phagocytes have um, but they can't do anything about it. They, that's not their specialty. So you need a kind of different type of uh, a defense to try to uh, fight the cells that have been infected. So that's going to be the cell-mediated immunity. And this type of immunity can also protect us from cancer cells. So they can try to um, kill cancer cells so that you don't have um, proliferation of cancer cells in your body, which leads to cancer. This type of immunity also targets foreign cells, such as grafts. So grafts are just kind of transplanted tissues. So when you receive a transplant, the tissues, the cells from another person will be considered foreign, right? Because they're not from your own body. And they can also be the target of cell-mediated immunity. Okay, I want to introduce a couple of terms. You may have known these very well, but just in case, first one is antigen. So antigens are substances that can stimulate our adaptive defenses. So they're uh, pretty much just targets of all adaptive immune responses. So antigens could be, you know, a whole bacteria cell or could be some of the, the protein structures on the surface of a virus. So anything that can kind of mobilize the adaptive defense can be considered as antigen. Antibodies, so antibodies are proteins. Okay, make sure you know that antibodies are proteins. And antibodies are secreted by B cells. This is the second time I mentioned this. Um, so the antibodies can bind antigens. So these antibodies uh, have a really kind of specific relationship with the antigens. They're kind of like enzymes and their substrates right a very specific relationship same thing here antibodies and antigens so they have this kind of lock and key relationship right so it's a very, very specific antibodies can recognize their target antigens and they can bind to the antigens. And this will uh, lead to some of the other processes um, that can kind of either neutralize uh, or destroy the antigens. So this is a, a very good diagram to kind of show you how antibody is produced right, when you look at the humor immunity. So we can see uh, over here, this is the antigen. And now you know what antigens are anything that can trigger our immune response. So let's say these are some bacteria cells, they're antigens. And the antigens are going to be kind of bound to the receptors on the surface of B cells. All right, now this is going to trigger formation of clones. Okay. So you can see there are two kind of different directions here, right? Some of the clones will develop into plasma cells. Now, this is very important. You absolutely have to know what plasma cells are. So plasma cells are uh, one kind of string of B cell clones that will secrete antibodies, okay? So the plasma cells are actually the specific B cells that secrete antibodies. So antibody production, so that's why the plasma cells are very important. Make sure you know plasma cells. All right. Now, the other kind of branch 
will develop into a different kind of clone cells, which are called memory B cells. So these memory cell, B, memory B cells, they do not uh, directly secrete or produce antibodies, but instead they maintain that memory of what the antigen is like. Okay. And if you are exposed to that antigen again, then this memory B cells can respond really, really quickly. Um, they can develop into plasma cells, which will make the antibodies. But again, remember the, the memory cell, because of the memory cells, the response from the B cells to make antibodies is going to be, is going to be much, much quicker than the first time around. So this allows you to mount a faster, stronger immune response uh, against the pathogens that you are exposed to again. So the second time, your body is much, much better protected than the first time. Okay, I want to talk about the three types of T cells real quickly because you may see some questions on this. It's not as common as um, questions about you know, antibodies, what cells produces antibodies. But I think you may see something like this, especially about the helper T cells because it's related to HIV. All right, the first type of T cells is called helper T cells. Helper T cells. Now, these helper T cells, sometimes written as TH, they do not directly attack cancer cells or infected cells, but they help. So they're not the actual, the actual killer cells, but they help other cells do the attack, right? So the helper T cells kind of interact with not just cytotoxic cells, but also B cells. So T, the helper T cells are actually crucial for both humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity. The helper T cells can interact with the B cells, and interact with those cytotoxic T cells and really activate those cells and make them proliferate, make them multiply faster. So that's what helper T cells do. They're really kind of like a director or you know, the, the boss and they tell you know, what the workers do. Right? The cytotoxic T cells are the actual killer cells. So they will directly attack uh, cells that have been infected with a uh, parasite or virus, cancer cells are also foreign cells. Okay. So when we do tissue or, or organ transplant, uh, we are trying to kind of suppress the immune response for our body to reject the foreign tissues or organs. Right? So that's actually uh, the cytotoxic T cells that will attack the foreign tissues and uh, organs. The third one, the regulatory T cells. Now they don't kill anything either. So they're not the killer cells, but they are very, very important, especially when we talk about kind of over response from the immune system, you know, such as allergies. So the regulatory T cells based on the name, they regulate, right? So they can really calm down the immune system. So when it's time to stop the attack, that's when the regulatory, regulatory T cells come in and they will dampen the immune response. They will wind down the immune, immune response so that you don't always have this kind of strong, aggressive immune response against everything. Okay. So that's the three types of T cells. Now, um, I made this table to kind of help you compare the differences between B cells and T cells because most of the questions, the common questions that I have seen are uh, about the information in this table. So the adaptive system are divided into humoral and the cell-mediated immunity. Okay? So again, remember the B cells are involved in the humoral immunity, while T cells are involved in the cell-mediated immunity. And in cell-mediated immunity, there's no antibody, no antibody. Uh, instead, the cells would directly attack the targets. So for B cells, for uh, humoral immunity, the targets are really extracellular pathogens. So what is extracellular? I think we mentioned this before, but I don't know if you remember. Extra, do you know what cellular means, right? Something about referring to the cell. So extracellular means things that outside the cell. So if these are the cells, okay, 
the space outside the cells, you know, between these cells, that's considered extracellular. So for example, we talk about extracellular fluid, right? So that refers to the fluid that's outside the cells. Okay? So the extracellular pathogens could be, you know, bacteria cells, right? That are outside the cells. So those are going to be the target for antibodies. Now the T cells, oh, there's a C missing. The T cells, remember, attack cells that have been affected, right? The sick cells. And the goal is to kind of clear out those sick cells so that there's no uh, ground for the parasites or viruses to multiply, right? They can also attack cancer cells. And in fact, there are some, uh, uh, new treatments, new cancer treatment being developed utilizing T cells to uh, elim eliminate cancer cells. Farm grafts, we know about that, the transplant tissues, organs. Site of origin, both T cells and the B cells originate from the red bone marrow. Remember, bone marrow is the site for blood cell production, right? And that includes all the leukocytes. Um, so B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, they are produced in the red bone marrow. The site of maturation is different. The B cells will mature in red bone marrow. So that's where the, the name comes from, right? The B, uh, the B for bone marrow. The T cells will uh, do a little bit differently. Uh, They're gonna migrate into thymus. Thymus, uh, that's why it's called a T cell. All right, now the effector cells, the plasma cells, are blown of B cells that will actually make antibody, right? A, B, that stands for antibodies. So if I give you a question that says what cells produce antibodies, the answer could be B cells, that's right. Or if you see plasma cells, that's also the correct answer. All right, now B cells can also develop into memory cells, right? Remember, we talk about why memory cells are uh, critical. They are long-lived. They maintain the memory of the antigen, right? So next time if you're exposed to the antigen, again, then the memory cells can utilize the memory and produce uh, antibodies, right? Develop into plasma cells and produce the antibodies much, much faster. The effective cells for T cells are these three different types of T cells, right? And we talk about the different functions for each cell.